All right, we're here at my outdoor worm bin and we're gonna check on three things. First, we're gonna check on the moldy hamburger that we put down here. And actually it was about four or five hamburgers full of awesome veggie scraps. And then since it's St. Patrick's Day and my name is Patrick, we're gonna give them a green feeding. And then finally, we're gonna do a special banana plant cross section experiment and we'll get into that later. But let's go ahead and get underneath here and look for that veggie burger. And you'll see there's a lot of uh, bedding on top and that's because I went around the edges and I took out a bunch of castings right here as I'm digging down we're already seeing just lots of worms and let's kind of get inside and see what we've got now right there looks like oh right here part of the burger and you know Ann over at Plant Obsessed had mentioned that if you don't kind of get something wet down like bread that kind of thing then it could get hard and I don't know if that's what we're seeing here or if this is this may be some kind of apple, but on the top, it almost felt like that's what I was running into, like right here, a little bit of moldy burger, but just a ton of worms going right throughout it. So let's keep digging down and see what we've got here. And yeah, they really jump right into that veggie burger. And sure enough, just tons of worms in and out of here and just making all kinds of great castings. You know, we put a layer of hamburger buns down and then we put the veggies right on top. So any of this brown stuff you're seeing right here, this dark stuff is castings that they've made from those veggies. Let's keep digging around. <laughs> oh my gosh. It literally feels like putting my hands in wet spaghetti as I pull up this worm ball. Now, as I was waiting these past eight days for this feeding to get consumed, I did add in some water and right here you can see the worms just all over this whatever this is and this looks like the onion so if you're wondering about onion in your worm bins certainly in a worm bin that has five to six thousand worms in it that's going to be no problem they haven't gotten to it completely but there certainly was a lot of food and they were surrounding it so let's keep digging and oh yeah i feel it i feel it right under here oh check that out any of this blue area right here is just what's left of the burgers. They were put in here because they got very moldy. Some of the things I'm looking for in here as we're in the middle of March, March 17th to be exact, is now is when I start to expect to see maybe some black soldier fly larvae. And here we are inside of a banana peel and we've got some worms right there. It's not gonna be very easy for me to take off this sticker, but without some worms being on it. So I'll have to get that out later. But yeah, we'll see if as we go through here, we run into any black soldier fly larvae. And with those, what you might see as maybe a black wasp, just kind of sitting on the edge of a windowsill or on a plant is actually a mimic fly known as the black soldier fly. They don't fly around. You usually won't see them flying through the air. They just kind of chill there and they mimic a black wasp so that no one bothers them. Check out that just absolutely tons of all kinds of sizes of red wigglers and that's another thing you'll see in your outdoor bins especially whoa <laughs> check that out man i hit the mother load right there tons of worms i love it check it out we'll just sit here for a second and let them go down All right, they've done a pretty good job of getting inside there. So yeah, as I was saying, this time of year, another thing you're looking for is you'll probably see a lot more babies or a mixture of different size worms in your bins. And that's because as they're laying cocoons throughout the winter, they may or may not hatch right away. And right now is when they'll start doing that. And wow, we are uncovering where we put all the mango seeds and avocado seeds. And with that, the worms just absolutely flock to them. And these were all put on the very bottom of the feeding. And then I layered the hamburger buns, then I layered the veggies, and then I put the top of the hamburger buns. So they've actually gone underneath everything to get down in here. And oh man, as I just dig more and more underneath, more and more worms, that's just incredible. And that kind of leads me to the last thing you kind of want to look out for in an outdoor bin this time of year is as it starts to rain more, what can happen is depending on where you have your bin, you have it in a low lying area or on the ground, you want to make sure that the bin itself is able to drain. And I'm not just talking the material that it's made out of. Yes, that can drain, 
but if it's sitting in a pool of water, then the bin itself is not going to drain. So just make sure if you've had your bin somewhere during the winter that it's still acceptable during the summer, or even if your snow is starting to thaw, that it's acceptable where it is and it's not gonna get flooded underneath. So yeah, look at this, look at this. Like an example of like a perfect worm right here. That's his underneath, this is a red wiggler. If I just kind of roll it over, you can see the clitellum like perfectly. I would say this is just after the juvenile stage, full adult, and you can see the bulging clitellum right there. And then I've got one right here on my other finger. So good showing right there. This bin is just fantastic with worms. So let me kind of mix it around a little bit and then we'll get ready for our feeding. I just got to stop real quick. This is, this is just so, so many worms. All right, so as you saw me do that, there's just an absolute ton of worms. And a lot of people have asked me, am I going to start another bin or are you going to take the population and break it in two to grow the worms more? And worms are self-regulating, so they're not going to produce so much that they can't fit in here anymore. So I'm just going to leave this bin. I've got plenty of worms, plenty of castings coming out. So right now, unless I get some better direction from the executive producer, we're stuck at three bins in a cocoon nursery. So Let's go ahead and start our feeding. All right, first things first is we always start with a little bit of shredded cardboard and there's some shredded paper in here too. Especially with a bin like this where I'm constantly pulling out castings, it's important to keep replenishing with carbon. And then next, we're gonna put in our green feeding. And almost all of this is from my garden. A lot of leafy greens, got some celery, broccoli, and then we've got an avocado shell. So let's go ahead and add our green feeding for St. Patrick's Day. There we go. And this avocado, I'm sure, is gonna attract the worms. I'm gonna add a little bit of bedding on top of that. And then we'll go in with some of our coffee, with the, which is just another food source for them that I like to add. And then next we've got some pulverized oats and I encourage you to look in your pantry and see if you've got oats or cornmeal or flour or something you can grind up and kind of feed to them as a worm chow. And just a word of caution about that, you kind of want to do it lightly, otherwise it'll clump up. And this right here is pulverized eggshells. And I add this one for my garden, but also for the worms, they swallow it and they use it in their digestion. They have gizzards to help grind their food. All right, and let's add a little bit more carbon. And then now we're gonna do the heart of the experiment. So what you're seeing here is a cross section of two of my banana plants. Now, typical plants grow from the tips. That's why you don't see a tree starting at the trunk and then just growing up. It's growing at the tips of all its leaves. But for banana plants, they're kind of like grasses. They grow actually from the very center up. So this banana plant right here had not sprouted any bananas at all. But this banana plant over here had, and you see its center has this more dense core right here. And that's because this is the stem that pops up and then on the end of it is flowers and those individual fruits within that flower become your bananas. So with this experiment, I wanted to see which one of these goes faster. Now, obviously this one is bigger, but more importantly, I wanna see about this core. The banana plant, as you can see, lots of different cells which contain water. In fact, if you cut a banana plant, it immediately starts weeping, but over here, Although this feels a little wet, it doesn't have these individual cells. So I'm real interested to see how each one of these does. So let's go ahead and put these in on top. Hopefully we'll be able to see them as the worms attack them and we'll see how they do. Now each one of these sections you can see kind of comes apart and it was an individual leaf and as it grows out, those sections grow wider. So right in here, it's already starting to come apart, but right in here was the latest leaf that was gonna grow up, but unfortunately it froze and then it died and same thing with here. I'm gonna add just a little bit of carbon on top. And then now we'll just bury it up. So I hope you've enjoyed this video so far. And if you do, go ahead and hit the like button. I appreciate it. I've got a couple other bins where I do different experiments. I've got a tiny worm bin and a vermi hut worm bin. So hit the subscribe button if that interests you and the bell notification if you wanna get notified when I come out with a new video, which is about three times a week. So I hope everybody is having a great St. Patrick's Day and I hope everybody is having a great day in general. So happy vermicomposting, everybody. Take care now.